Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tilgoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so this is going to be the first part of a two-part uh, a couple of videos on a line weaver Burke plot example using the enzyme catalase. Um, so in general, when we're doing these line weaver Burke plot problems, we're trying to find four things. Number one, the Vmax, two, the Km, Michaela's constant, number three, the K cat, and number four, the catalytic efficiency. In this video, we're going to do the first two, which are the Vmax and the Km. We're going to find what those are. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it with an already plotted graph that contains a y equals mx plus b equation. All right. So one thing about having a line with a y equals mx plus b equation is it makes the overall process a lot simpler for finding Vmax and Km and a lot more accurate than with a simple Michaelis-Menten plot. So I just want to quickly review what we talked about in some of the previous videos. All right. When we have something in the form y equals mx plus b, m, this which is just a number in this case, which is the 0 0.000125, this by definition in terms of a line weaver Burke plot is the km divided by the vmax. Okay, it's the quotient of those. The y-intercept, b, this is just simply 1 over the vmax. Okay, so honestly, when you get a problem like this that has a y equals mx plus b, the easiest thing to do is just find the vmax, all right, which just means you figure out what the y-intercept is, and in this case, this number right here is the y-intercept. You just take the reciprocal of that. So what I'm going to do is, let me come down here. So the vmax of the enzyme is equal to 1 over the y-intercept. Well, what's the y-intercept? Well, it's going to be, let me write it, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5. And the units of this in the denominator are going to be seconds per micromolar. Now, how did I know that, that these right here were the units? Well, I'm going to look at the units of the y-axis, seconds per micromolar, and the y-intercept b in any rate that comes from here, or vmax, will have those will have micromolar per second units. Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Kinetics and Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to do a line weaver Burke plot example, and we're going to calculate using this uh, line right here, this line weaver Burke plot line, and the corresponding y equals mx plus b equation, we're going to calculate the Vmax and the Km of this enzyme, which is known as catalase. Okay, This is going to be part one of a two-part little set of videos. In the next couple of the next video after this, we're going to calculate the Kcat and the uh, catalytic efficiency of this enzyme. Okay, um, One thing just to be aware of, there's in general for these kind of problems, four kinetic parameters that you usually want to calculate. Those are Vmax, Km, Kcat, and catalytic efficiency. We're going to do the first two here. Now, the main reason you generate a line weaver Burke plot instead of using a Michaelis Menten plot is because line weaver Burke plots are a lot more uh, accurate. You usually have to estimate with a, with a uh, Michaelis Menten plot, and that's not exactly what we want. But it turns out that whenever you have something in this form right here, where you have a y equals mx plus b, it actually becomes relatively simple uh, to figure out what, what um, the Km and the Vmax are. Okay? So first of all, the very first thing I want to mention, this B right here, the y-intercept, which in the case of this equation is this, this right here, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. Okay, this right here, this is our B. It turns out that B, its value is equivalent to 1 over the Vmax, or in other words, the reciprocal of the Vmax. Okay? The other thing... The slope, m, which in this case is 0 0.000125, this turns out is the quotient of the Km and the Vmax. So Km divided by the Vmax. So I want to go over a strategy for figuring out what the Vmax and the Km are. All right? In any line weaver burke plot problem you have, the very first thing I would do is figure out the Vmax. Okay? Now, recall that 
In other words, B is 1 over the Vmax. They're reciprocals of each other. Or we could say the Vmax is just 1 over B, or 1 over the y-intercept. So what's our y-intercept? Well, it's this point zero, 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 all that to 5, which I'll just tell you if you were to look at this, that's 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. Okay? So if we take 1 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. Now, what are the units of the y-intercept? Well, they're the same units as the y-axis, seconds per micromolar. Whatever these units are on the line of the Burk plot, those are the units of the y-intercept. So this is going to be seconds per micromolar. And what do we get whenever we divide that? So let me do this. 1 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. This is a big number. Let's see. Count the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is going to be 2, so let's see what this is. This is 200 million, and the units are going to be micromolar per second. That is our Vmax. So in other words, if I want to find the Vmax of this enzyme, I just take the reciprocal of the y-intercept, whatever this b is, this number right here, this number, let me get my pen, right, utensil, whatever this is, just take the reciprocal of it, and that's your Vmax. The units are whatever the units are of the y-axis, okay? Now for Km, that's the second thing I would find. So always the first thing I would find is the Vmax. It's the easiest thing to do take the reciprocal of the y-intercept. If I want to find the Km, there's two ways to think about doing it. Recall that the slope of this line, so the slope of this line, it's just a number, but it's Km divided by Vmax. So the slope is Km divided by Vmax, okay? Which in this case, what's our slope? It's 0.000125, 0.000125. What are the units of that? Well, the units of Km are going to be micromolar. The reason I know that is there's a micromolar right here on the x-axis, so those are the units there. The units of the Vmax we just found were micromolar per second. Okay, that's the slope. But if, if you think about this, if you were to take Km divided by Vmax and just multiply by the Vmax, these Vmaxes would cancel and you'd just be left with the Km. So what that means is to find the Km, you just take the slope of the line and just multiply by the Vmax, okay? Because that'll get you the Km. The Vmaxes will cancel in that case. Now, there's another thing that some people like to do. And instead of taking M times the Vmax, another way you can do this, perfectly legal to get you the same answer, is take the slope divided by the y-intercept. Some people would prefer to do that. I usually do this first method, and the reason being is because I, I know for a fact I first would have calculated the Vmax, so it's already in my calculator, and then I just come up here and multiply by the slope. That's easier to me, than it, and it's a lot less error-prone, too, because I would have just found Vmax, then just times, and then the slope. But in any case, the Km for this, my slope is 0 0.000125, that's going to be micromolar divided by micromolar per second, okay? My Vmax, what is that? I just found that that was 200 million micromolar per second. Now, one thing I just want to, just to, to point out, because it may be something you thought of, a Vmax of 200 million micromolar per second, that's enormous. That can't be right. Sometimes on these problems, you might get a Vmax of, I don't know, 5 micromolar per second. Sometimes you might get something like this. Trust your instinct. The important thing is to trust the math on this. I never said this yet, but catalase, the enzyme we're dealing with, is the fastest enzyme on the planet. So it's going to have a huge Vmax. And we'll also find in the next video, it'll have a huge K-cat. Okay, So just because it kind of looks enormous, trust your instinct. If you did the math right, your uh, answer is going to be right.
So notice here, micromolar per second cancels, which leaves us with the appropriate units for km micromolar. So let's go ahead and multiply that. 200 million, which is already in my calculator, times 0 0.000125. And I'm getting that the km, the km of this enzyme, catalase, is 25,000 micromolar. Now, one thing that uh, a teacher might prefer, and it just depends on your teacher, this answer is right. Sometimes, a lot of times actually, KM is expressed in millimolar. So you have to pay attention to what your professor wants. If you wanted to convert this to millimolar, this would just be 25,000 divided by 1,000, so 25 millimolar. Okay. And if you ever compare the two KMs of, um, for different enzymes, you actually have to compare them in the same unit. So a lot of times, because the units are given in millimolar, you want to convert it to millimolar. Okay? So that's how you go about calculating these quantities, Vmax and Km. So Vmax, take 1 over the y-intercept, reciprocal of the y-intercept, in other words. And then for Km, just multiply the slope times the Vmax. Or if you prefer, the other way to find Km is just take the slope divided by the y-intercept. Both will give you the same answer. Okay, and that's going to conclude our first video on catalase, line weaver burke plot, where we're going to calculate um, the Vmax and the Km. In the next video, we're going to continue the same problem, but we're going to calculate the Kcat and the catalytic efficiency. Okay, so join us in that video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this and subscribe. Thank you.